the purpose of it. Yeah. You all set? Yeah. I'm Parker Steiner with Walberg, Woodruff, Nimmo, and Salone. I'm here with my colleague, Michael Nimmo, and Ben Johnson of Johnson Law. Earlier this morning, we filed a lawsuit against Livonia Public Schools, Garden City Public Schools, and Vision Specialist James Baird for the sexual assault of two young, visually impaired female students at Douglas Elementary School in Garden City. Baird was and is employed by Livonia Public Schools, and Livonia contracted him out to Garden City to provide services to visually impaired students. Both Livonia and Garden City schools failed to protect a vulnerable group of female students, and they allowed Baird to perform examinations without supervision and perform examinations that they were unaware of. At Douglas Elementary School in Garden City, Baird would perform examinations in a room in the school library without other adults present or other students there. The room did not have windows and the door would be closed. Baird had unfettered access to a vulnerable population of young girls. On numerous occasions in 2018 and 2019 at Douglas Elementary School, Baird sexually assaulted two and probably more visually impaired girls while conducting his vision services. On both of these girls, he placed occluders, which are goggles that completely blacked out the limited vision that they had. And then he proceeded to sexually assault them. James Beard is a sexual predator, and he thought he could get away with the abuse by targeting young, visually impaired elementary school girls. But he was wrong. These young girls are and were brave, and they told their parents about the abuse and their parents immediately contacted the Garden City Police Department. After the first report of abuse against James Berry, Garden City Public Schools immediately terminated their contract with him. They knew that he was a threat to their students. Livonia Public Schools, however, allowed him to continue to provide services, and as of this morning, he is still listed as an employee of Livonia Public Schools, despite the school knowing in 2019 of allegations of sexual abuse against him. After the first report of sexual abuse against James Barrett, neither Garden City or Livonia Public Schools notified parents who have visually impaired students of the allegations and report of abuse against James Barrett. A Garden City police investigation is ongoing and we call upon the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office to bring charges and immediately arrest James Barrett. Ben. One of the things that, that is going to be uh, huge in our lawsuit, folks, is what we call the Child Protective Services Act here under Michigan law. We filed this uh, case in both in federal court. It's pending in front of Judge Victoria Roberts, downtown in the United States District Court, Eastern District of Michigan. Judge Roberts is a phenomenal jurist, and we're uh, incredibly grateful and pleased that she's uh, on this case. We've alleged a number of things, but one of the things, again, that is most important for us Michigan folks is the Child Protection Safety Act, designed to do one thing and one thing only, protect children. It made a number of folks the primary reporters, and these folks are primary reporters. Once moms, plural, once moms let these folks know that there was an issue, Child Protective Services should have been immediately contacted and an investigation done. And we're still getting up and running, and so we're going to have some answers for, for you folks in the next 30 to 60 days on what, if anything, Child Protective Services did. But if they weren't involved, like I would suspect they're not, because they often are not, they should have been. The Garden City Police Department, of course, is involved. We would at least commend uh, those folks for looking into this uh, as deeply as they are. And we also, uh, again, want to give a shout out to the Wayne County Prosecutor. Office. This is not easy things to prove when you're dealing with young folks, but when you have two young ladies with uh, individual I'll call it, issues, physical issues, and this man basically blinds them, and their story is absolutely identical a year apart, obviously evidence is overwhelming that these things actually happen. 
And what should have happened as well is when there was this Title IX, and you folks again in Michigan, we all think about Larry Nasser and Michigan State, Title IX investigation. We all think about U of M and Dr. Anderson, Title IX investigations. We need to look into this more carefully. This is a federal mandated investigation. And what we're finding here in Michigan is the same things happening over and over again. And that is that these serial abusers are being left off, if you will, semi-scot-free because they never really get to the meat of the, of, of the situation. In this case, uh, Parker and, and Michael have done a phenomenal job in, in, in getting as much information as possible out there without actually having a lawsuit filed. The Title IX report, folks, lists three reasons for why they were, Garden City was never going to have this gentleman back in, and I use that term loosely, gentlemen, in their, uh, in their schools. And of course, not apparently enough for Livonia since he's still employed there. Three reasons that they were given. One of his examinations with one of the girls lasted 13 minutes, despite the fact that it was supposed to last 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, this man was required to sign in and out when entering the building, and he didn't do that on one occasion. And then they, if they recognized that, that they had a problem with him using these occluders. So a number of things come to mind. Where are the allegations of sexual abuse in this report? Where is the finding that he did, in fact, uh, these just despicable acts and, and, and bore himself, if you will, his penis on these two girls? Where are they? Where's the comment? Where's the finding that he did it? Or and the defendants would say, where's the finding that he didn't? But we do these investigations and then we beat around the bush and we get rid of a guy saying that he didn't spend enough time and he shouldn't have done this. When the, what really needs to happen is you need to find that he did this, that these allegations are substantiated is their term and make a finding, but they don't. And why is that important? Because now when this guy goes to the next school, because ladies and gentlemen, he's got to go to the next school. He came over here from the west side of the state. So one of the things that we hope uh, with your assistance and the, and the media's assistance, we greatly appreciate that, is letting this know that this gentleman has, has been in business now for over 10 years, came here from the west side of the state, and we want to know if there's any victims over there that can give us some information about what he did there. Because we don't think this just started at age 40-some for this man. Two different girls one year apart. He's been doing it for a while. We believe the evidence will absolutely show. But on top of that, when you come up with a final hearing, or a final statement in a federally mandated investigation that he did these acts wrong. The next school district will look, oh, there's nothing wrong with this. He, he, he did one thing wrong. He had a meeting too long. They need to target him as being, even if they want to say allegations, it needs to be in their findings. It needs to be in their report. So again, what we're hoping by bringing attention to this issue, one, that the abuse stops and Livonia Public School does the appropriate thing and takes care of that. Two, we want to bring light to the, uh, uh, the Child Protection Act of Michigan, start giving it more teeth, and start requiring mandatory reporters to report timely. And three, we want to bring light to the federally mandated Title IX investigations that were so used to being whitewashed, okay? Absolute whitewash, and having findings that allow these serial predators to keep doing the same thing, whether it's school, whether it's the Catholic Church, whether it's Boy Scouts, you name it. These examples of serial predators, they're only getting away with it, and it's only being perpetuated for one reason, that's because we allow it. So we're hoping, again, by bringing attention to this, that that will stop immediately, and there will never be any child, any child, like these two poor children that were subjected to this man's sickness. Thank you. Ladies. Yeah, I'm gonna start off saying I'm hurt. I'm very hurt. Like we we trusted the schools that we we our kids is in the school system for eight hours. We trust y'all to care for our kids for eight hours. And for something like this to happen, I'm just lost for words. And once my baby said she was uncomfortable, he should have let her out that room and said he prolonged it. It just I'm, I'm hurt, disgusted. Um, 
I don't have any trust in with my daughter's condition. That's something that I need because anything can happen with my daughter. And how do I trust someone to help us take care of her? Um, for any person, a child, anybody to have to deal with this, it's just, it's totally unfair. And people should decide when they choose to do something or get exposed to something that person took that away from our children. I'm just, just completely disgusted. And it's like, it's nothing that he can say or they can say to justify what he did. It's nothing. And the volume for the schools, y'all need to be held accountable. Why did y'all let that man back into y'all school system after my daughter allegation? Well, he can just do it to other little kids? That's just not, this is just not right. I want to remind folks in the room, we had a, 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 a multi-year ongoing litigation with Livonia Public Schools in the not so uh, distant past that involved a special uh, ed teacher who was absolutely physically and emotionally abusing the children to the point that Livonia Public Schools actually found in their own internal investigation that she did that. Uh, and then ultimately there were multiple lawsuits in federal court our case was the gold GOHL case versus, uh, versus Lavonia Public School and others. And that was, again, a multi-year lawsuit situation. Unfortunately, we see the Lavonia Public Schools didn't learn anything uh, by those previous uh, proof, proof positive of, of abuse. Here, unfortunately, it's sexual abuse and it needs to be stopped. And we also need to police department to really step up because I, when I did report it and I did the right, I reported to the school, I reported to the police department. And this is something that I found out on Christmas. And I, when I spoke to the police department, they asked me to wait to after the holiday, meaning the new year, to report a sexual abuse. And I told them exactly what I was reporting. So I need this matter taken more seriously than what it is, because it seems like they're not moving fast enough. They're not moving fast enough to me, for me, for my daughter. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jennifer Chambers with the Detroit News, um, and I'm sorry uh, for what happened to your children. This is a difficult question. Can someone address what was the, the nature of the abuse, the allegations, what happened? Perfectly. So it's included in our complaint. Complaint in 2018, there were two events of abuse in the fall. On one occasion, one of the young girls was wearing a shirt with a tiger on it and where the tiger's eyes would be is where the young girl's breast would be and Baird massaged and fondled her breast, stating that he likes the tiger's eyes. On another occasion in 2018, James Baird placed the occluders on the young girl. Um, the occluders, like I stated, completely eliminate whatever limited or vision that these young girls do have. And when he had the includers on their eyes, he unzipped his pants and put his penis in her hand. In 2019, with the other young girl, um, again, both of these examinations taking place at Douglas Elementary School in a room in the library with no windows, no other students or adults present, and the door closed. In 2019, he used the occluders again. Um, that's where his examination was supposed to take 40 minutes. Uh, it only took 13 minutes and he placed the occluders on the young girl. He put his penis in her hand and around her mouth. She felt uncomfortable, removed the occluders, saw him zipping up his pants and asked for the examination to be done, her time with him to be done. She wanted to go back to her classroom. She felt unsafe. And James Baird attempted to try to continue additional examinations with her. She left the room after 13 minutes. When Baird was interviewed for that investigation, he said that examination lasted 40 minutes. The video footage shows that it lasted 13 minutes. He had no explanation for it. He was required to sign in and sign out. He didn't sign in and sign out on that particular day. And as Ben stated, um, the school's investigation determined that for that student's diagnosis, that there is no clinical or therapeutic reason to be using the occluders for examinations. So for those reasons, Garden City terminated their agreement with Barrett, but they didn't do it for the right reason. And the right reason would have been 
that he was left alone with this young student and he sexually abused her. Garden City felt that he was a threat to additional students and that's why they terminated their agreement. Livonia didn't. And since that period of time, they've allowed him to have access to probably dozens, if not hundreds of more students. He felt that he could get away with his sexual perversion because these are young females with visual impairment. But these girls were brave and they told their parents and their parents are extremely brave for calling the police and doing the right thing and being here today demanding accountability, not just from James Beard, but from both these schools that allowed him access to these students without any supervision and allowed him to sexually abuse these girls and sadly, probably dozens more. I just have a follow-up question. Did um, the allegations occur only at Douglas Elementary in Garden City in these cases? Correct. Okay. okay. What was the age of the, the girls at the time of the assault? What's their age now? Um, my daughter was eight. She's 10 now. My daughter was eight. She's 10 now. Um, and what did, can you guys discuss what Garden City did in terms of reporting or contacting you know, the school district? Did call Child Protective Services or call the police? We're still in the process of our investigation. The Garden City Police Department first investigated this matter in 2019, and the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office at that time did not arrest Barrett and press charges. Uh, there is an ongoing investigation now after the most recent report in 2020. But again, you have two extremely similar allegations of abuse against the same individual within a 20 month period of time. And the second report was made in December of 2020, and it's still ongoing. Is that when one of the mothers came forward or contacted the police? What that is the correct. Okay, so there is there is one of the mothers contacted the police in 2019. Okay. And then in December of 2020, Miss Washington contacted the police. Garden City Police. That's correct. Did, did the cops talk to the two eight-year-old victims? No, they interviewed me. The there was an interview of the two young girls through um, kids talk. Kids talk. Is that like a service that? Interviews children of our victims. It is, yes. Was the prosecutor, did the prosecutor attend that, you know, or the police attend that interview? The police are aware of the interviews. They are aware. Correct. They do not attend. It's a one on one situation, but it's usually videotaped. Uh, we have a question via Zoom. What does the video you mentioned contain, and where on the west side of the state did he previously work? So the video shows him exiting the library. There wasn't video footage from that particular room, but that's how they were able to determine that his examination lasted 13 minutes. And then as far as where he worked on the west side of the state. I thought it was Benton Harbor St. Joe. That area, that's correct. Still investigating that, but that is our understanding that he was there for years. If I have another question. Do you happen to know if this um, James Barrett, is he certified in some kind of um, schooling or technique for what he does? What's his background? He is, so he has um, his teaching certificate. And then I believe around 2013, he obtained his master's in, and I'm not sure the exact title, but it pertains to being a vision specialist. So it's again important to know folks that these young ladies were in his class, if you will, because of state and federal programs in order to work with them because of their special needs. Mm -hmm. So think about somebody that has visual problems and then you put blinders on their eyes mm -hmm. and ask yourself what's really going on. And that's again, one of the three findings that Garden City found to be important that apparently Livonia doesn't. Have you been able to determine how many students he worked with in Garden City as a group and how many he has in Livonia Public Schools? How many kids he has access to? No, we will get that information now that a lawsuit is filed. The, the majority of the information that we can get is by way of a subpoena, and you can only have a subpoena if a lawsuit is up and running. But Parker and Michael have done a phenomenal job of getting information uh, as much as they can by way of FOIA, Freedom of Information Act request. A lot of people don't know that there's a lot of documents. We all think that we can get everything with FOIA, and you cannot. 
but they, uh, these gentlemen uh, have done a phenomenal job of getting together everything that they can that way. We will be getting a lot more and what I believe to be a lot more damning evidence once we have subpoena power. Sir. Uh, just like Dr. said earlier, both of you um, are doing a great job of great coming forward with this and very transparent. I just wanted either the parents have any advice, anything that you would say to other parents uh, that are going through the situation, because not always uh, will it be as clear if someone, your child coming to you is divulging what's going on. Sometimes it's hard. Is there something you picked up on? You know, the relationship with the other? Uh, this is. Um, you pick up on your child's behavior, and it was noticed by me, my entire family, other teachers. I have text messages to her for the teacher of what's going on, where she changed so much, and me simply having a conversation with my daughter on Christmas is when she told me, and I talk to my daughter all the time. I'm a parent that they know that they can come to me. They know I'm going to have their back. My kids have always told me that, like, I know you love me because you take up for me and do this, you know? But we still have to talk to them because they're still human and everyone's different, you know? So it's simply, it's just having a conversation with them, watching their behaviors, their patterns. And what changes did you notice in, in, in her behavior? Um, my daughter was always so, uh, she always so pretty, loved to dress. Love to dress cute for dresses. And it's just like she got to the point where she didn't she didn't want to like dress cute anymore. I used to have to make her take baths. She didn't want to think about it. Me just thinking, like I'm asking her like, what's going on, you know? And just thinking maybe she's getting bullied at school, but she's dealing with this. Just everything, just her whole everything changed. My daughter used to love her. Uh, that was her thing. She had to wear a dress everywhere. My mom bought her this candy corn witch dress for Halloween, and she wore that for like a week straight over her clothes. But she just got to the point where she just wanted to wear big t-shirts, big pants. So didn't want anyone talking to her. She got very mean. She was never like a mean kid. She got mean. She was mean to me. She was just mean to everybody. She just wanted to be alone. I'm like, something's going on with my baby, and I just couldn't put my finger on it. And just still to this day, I'm like, how did I just not know? But as a parent, you never want to think this. You never, like, I wouldn't wish any parent, any sibling. My other kids are even dealing with this. Like, my family, my, you never want to think this is the reason why, you know? Any other questions? Man, just, just so I'm clear, he was fired in Garden City, but he's still teaching in Lavonia. I, I don't know that you could say he's fired. They're, they're not bringing him back, is how I think I would put it, Charlie, until I read the report myself. Uh, that's what I believe is, is the way in which, and again, that's to me a problem for, for both districts. Say why you're doing it, say what the allegations are. And say that that is one of you can guys. We live in Michigan. You can fire anybody for any reason that's not discriminatory at any time, even in a public institution. Okay, you don't need to be at. It's not at. It's not caused. In other words, it's at will. So you tell the guy there are these allegations, and that is one of many reasons why we're firing you. But you got to put that in people's file so that the next school district down the line knows. Do you have the date of when he left? Is it, it was December of 2019, was it not, Parker? It was. And um, December 2019. And um, can you just go over again um, what adults the girls reported to uh, entirely, or is it just their moms, or whether it's people at school that they told? Well, my daughter, um, I call her every day. Every day when she gets off the school bus because she gets the one on one transportation. And I just call her and ask her, like, how are your day been? And I could just hear in her voice something was wrong. And she said, Mommy, I had to tell you something. I said, What, baby? You could tell me. Like, I'll just wait till you get home from picking up uh, my youngest daughter. I'm like, No, tell me now. What's wrong? What's wrong with you? And she was like, Well, Mr. Veer did something appropriate to me. And my heart just shattered dead and then. So she came right home and told me. She said she didn't mention, mention it to her teacher. She wanted to tell me first. Okay. 
And did um, did you talk to any staff at that school after your daughter spoke to you? When she told me, I went, I um, contacted her father and I went straight to the police station. And in the midst at the police station, I was um, emailing her teacher, which her teacher emailed the principal, and the principal was in the board meeting, and that's when they um, let Jim uh, Beard go. Oh, okay, thank you, Miss Washington. Um, <clears throat> First, my daughter just um, disclosed to me. Um, I was the only person she told, and it was a while after the events took place. Um, and I then I contacted her current vision specialist, who was helpful with getting me their manager's number and everyone. So I did contact with all your schools first, and then I contacted Garden City Police, um, which, as I said before, they said I should attack our holiday. So I ended up making a police report with them. But, my daughter just came to me. When you say a vision specialist, was that someone additionally that worked with your daughter at the school? So how many people? Like, it was someone, it was her, it's, she has the same role as. We, they have a mobility specialist, which is the title with, with Barry, and they have a vision specialist. So mm -hmm. their title is to help them move around because they legally blind. Mobility. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they also have a, a vision specialist that helps them with the print and things for their school. So the girls are both legally fine? Yes. Any other questions? Just for any other attorney, any last message that you want to kind of send? This is not the first time you mentioned uh, and I said it before. So you know, to continue to be brave from year to year. Is there any other message that you kind of want to send out to the gentleman in this role in this position in this job that's still covered? Well, for us, you know, we, we obviously deal with the facts of each case, and that's why it's so important that these brave folks uh, are acknowledged for them stepping up and, and taking care of their child, because we all know in society what we do in this case and how it is viewed and what people actually, once they have information and they start knowing more about the law and the interaction between the law and everyday life, it helps everybody. So. Two major things, takeaways for me is we need to re reevaluate our uh, Child Protection Safety Act and make sure our mandatory reporters are all calling uh, Child Protective Services and getting involved in these investigations, one. And two, uh, we have to start looking more carefully, I think, at Title IX and what these Title IX investigations show and reveal and what they don't. And the fact of the matter is we want to, we want to put an end to ongoing systemic child abuse and child uh, sex abuse like we've seen in all these other cases, you need to call people out for even what the allegations are and include that in your findings so that the next school district knows, even if Baird's gonna maintain his innocence, you all know that, they're gonna defend and delay and deny this lawsuit but the way they always do. Fact of the matter is this next school district needs to know that these two moms have absolutely almost identical uh, allegations of misconduct that need to be evaluated before Barrett ever gets hired again. That's how it stops. And that's what we're still not doing. Here we are in 2021, no matter how many lessons we've seen all over this country, not just here in Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, USC, all of these places have had the same type of thing that we've had with Nasser and with Andrews. So it needs to be, it needs to be ended. We need to put a stop to it and we need to put these findings out there so that the public has more access to it and everybody is going to be safer because of it. I just want to reiterate that, you know, Ms. Petty reported this back in 2019, and no message was sent out to any of the other parents who have children with a disability. How many of you in this room would expect to be notified if your child was in a school with a disability and there's a report of a sexual assault on a disabled child and you don't get told about it? Ms. Washington was never told. That's disgusting. Any other questions? We appreciate everybody coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.